हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द फर्स्ट यूनिट ऑफ सी फोर जीरो टू दैट इज रीमेन इंटीग्रेशन इन सीरीज ऑफ फंक्शंस सो आई विल बी फॉलोइंग द बुक एज यू नो द रियल एनालिस बाय बॉटल एंड शर्बर्ट इज अ वेरी स्टैंडर्ड टेक्स्ट सो लेट इज बिगिन विद द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पार्टीशन ऑफ अ क्लोज इंटरवल let uh, ab i equal to ab be a closed interval in r then a partition of i is a finite ordered set p equal to x0 x1 x2 up to xn of points in i such that a less equal to x0 less than x1 less than x2 less than xn equal to b so in the form of a diagram so if we consider the closed interval 0 1 denote the end point by x0 Denote the end point by x naught and x five, and then the intermediate points as x one, x two, x three, x four. So then we get a partition. So for example, p equal to zero, half, and one, they form a partition of the closed interval zero one. Similarly, zero one, zero 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 point one, zero point five, zero point seven, zero point nine two, and one. This also forms a partition. Of zero one, it is easy to see that a part a closed interval can be partitioned in infinitely many ways. We can choose any points, uh, whatever we like. So the points of a partition P of a closed interval I divided into n non-overlapping sub-intervals, which we denote by I one equal to x not x one, I two equal to x one x two. In general, I R equal to x R minus one to x R. The length of the rth subinterval is x r minus x r minus one, and by definition of partition, this quantity is obviously positive. The norm or mesh of the partition P is defined as norm P equal to maximum of x r minus x r minus one. R goes from one to up to n. That is the length of the largest subinterval is known as the norm. It is also denoted by mu P. Then comes stacked partition. If we have a partition P. And uh, from each sub-interval x i minus one to x i, we select a point t i at random. Then the points t i are called tags tags of the sub-intervals i i. A set of ordered pairs p dot equal to closed interval x i minus one to x i, together with the tag t i of sub-intervals and corresponding tags is called a tag partition of i equal to a b. The tags can be chosen randomly. And note that an endpoint of a subinterval can be chosen as a tag for two consecutive subintervals. For the same partition, there are infinitely many ways of choosing the tags. And the norm of a tag partition is same as that of the of an ordinary partition and does not depend on the tags. So in diagram, a tag tag partition looks like something like this. Say A B is a closed interval, so where uh, x naught and x five they are the starting points, and x one, x two up to x four. there the intermediate points so we choose it point t1 at random t2 at random from the second interval t3 at random from the third interval t4 from the fourth interval t5 from the fifth interval so this forms a tag partition so note that this particular point uh, the end point of a sub interval this can serve as a this can serve as a tag for this sub interval as well as the second sub interval So, for a, as an example, we see p equal to zero, zero point two, zero point seven, zero point nine, one is a partition of zero one, and p p dot equal to zero, zero point two, with the tag zero point one, then second sub interval with the tag zero point three, third sub interval with the tag zero point seven five, fourth sub interval with the tag zero point nine eight is a tag partition of zero one. So, we can form another tag partition. So, p star p star equal to if we take the tag for the first one as zero point one five. But we have to be careful that this tag has to lie in between the endpoints of this corresponding sub-interval. So 0.5, I cannot take 0.9 as a tag for this sub-interval. This cannot be done. So 0.8, this is a tag for this sub-interval. 0.91 is a tag for this sub-interval. So. So this is also a tag partition of zero. So refinement of a partition. 
let p and q be two partitions of a b then q is said to be a refinement of p if p is a subset of q that is q contains all points of p together with some extra points right so thus the refinement of p can be obtained by adjoining a finite number of points to p so let p equal to uh, 0 0 0.2 0 0.7 1.5 2 is a partition of 0 2 and q equal to 0 0 0.2 0 0.4 please note the extra point then 0 0.7 1 1 is also an extra point so we have added two extra points to the partition p so as a result we get a new partition of 0 2 together with that we get a refinement of the original partition so we now discuss about darbo's integral so in the next few lectures you will see that the darbo's integral and ribbon integral are equivalent to one another so before that let us formally define what do you mean by darbo's integral so initially we start with lower sum and upper sums so it goes uh, like this uh, we start with a bounded function f on ab and p equal to x naught x1 f to xn is a partition of ab then f is uh, since f is bounded on the uh, interval ab so it is also bounded on each of the sub intervals i i equal to xi minus 1 to xi so we take mi as the greatest lower bound of f in the sub interval xi minus 1 to xi capital mi is the supremum or least upper bound of f in the sub interval xi minus 1 to xi and also let uh, small m and capital be the infimum and supremum of f in the closed interval a b so clearly we have the following inequality small m less than or equal to mi capital mi is less than or equal to capital m and obviously small mi is less than or equal to capital mi so this inequality is because of the fact that supremum over a larger set is smaller sorry uh, the infimum over a larger set is smaller and in this one is because of the fact that the supremum over a larger set is larger so the lower sum of f corresponding to p is defined as lpf is summation of i goes from 1 to n mi into xi minus xi minus 1 uh, which we also denote by delta xi and the upper sum of f corresponding to p is defined as upf equal to summation of capital mi into xi minus xi minus 1 note that the lower sum and upper sum both depend on the function as well as the partition that we have created so immediately we have the following result let f be a bounded function on the interval a b and p is any partition of a b then the lower sum is always less than or equal to the upper sum so the proof is very simple we have lpf equal to summation of mi into xi minus xi minus 1 and upf equal to summation of capital mi into xi minus xi minus 1 but for each i goes from 1 to up to n we have seen in the previous uh, page that small mi is less than or equal to capital mi because small mi is the infimum capital mi is the supremum and xi minus xi minus 1 this is always greater than 0 by definition of the partition so therefore small mi multiplied with xi minus xi minus 1 and is always less than or equal to capital mi multiplied with xi minus xi minus 1 and this is true for all i from 1 to up to n this part is very important right and um, so if we add up all these inequalities so we have actually n inequalities here we add up all these inequalities and to get summation mi into xi minus xi minus 1 less than or equal to summation of capital mi into xi minus xi minus 1 and by definition this is lpf and this is upf another result uh, f is a bounded function and p and q be two partitions of ab where q is a refinement of refinement of p, p so under refinement what happens to the lower sum and upper sum that is given by this result that lpf is less than or equal to lqf and uqf is less than or equal to upf that is refinement increases the lower sum now uh, this will be lower lower sum and decreases the upper sum so we first examine the effect of joining a single point to p let p equal to x naught x1 up to xn be a partition and let p dash equal to x naught x1 up to xk minus 1 and z with xk xk plus 1 to xn so what we have done here is that we have added a extra point z in between xk minus 1 and xk so p dash is the refinement of p obtained by joining a point z in p 
and let mk dash and mk double dash be the infimum of uh, f in xk minus 1 to z and z to xk respectively and similarly mk dash capital mk dash capital mk double dash with the supremum of f in those two intervals so but small mk and capital mk are the infimum and supremum of f in xk minus 1 to xk respectively so as earlier as explained earlier we will get this as the result that the infimum over a larger set is smaller so we have mk less than or equal to mk dash and mk is also less than or equal to mk double dash similarly the supremum over a larger set is larger so for that we get mk dash is less than or equal to mk and supremum of a larger set is larger for that we get mk double dash is also less than or equal to mk so we have lpf now lpf is summation mi into xi in minus xi minus 1 so that can be written as uh, in in two parts one is a summation without the point k the, without the kth term and plus the kth term so kth term is this so immediately we can replace xk minus xk minus 1 as this by subtracting and adding the quantity z and after some mod modification using the distributive property of real numbers we get this and by using the inequality given above from the, for the interval z to xk the uh, infimum is mk double dash for the in interval xk minus 1 to z the um, infimum is mk dash so this will be less than or equal to this sum and if we observe carefully this term is nothing but the l l q f it's not q f actually it has to be l l p dash p dash f okay, so it's less than or equal to l p dash f similarly u p f can be written as this and it can be shown that it's greater so just the same procedure just get rid of to u p dash p dash f so what we have seen if q is any refinement of p then q is obtained from p by joining a finite number of points to p hence repeating the above process we can show that lpf is less than or equal to QL, lqf and uqf is less than or equal to upf and uh, as a consequence of this result we also have this result that if f is a bounded function and p1 and p2 be any two partitions of ab then the lower sum with respect to p1 is always less than or equal to lower sum upper sum with respect to p2 that means uh, any lower sum is always less than or equal to every upper sum okay. or any upper sum is always greater than or equal to every every lower sum so that's quite simple we can prove it easily by using the earlier two results that uh, we have uh, p1 union p2 is a refinement of p1 and as well as p2 so by exercise 2 above lower sum lp1f is less than or equal to lp1p2 p1 union p2f and up1p2f is less than or equal to up2f so by 1 and 2 but uh, by the first result by 1 and 2 and by and by exercise 1 we have lpf lp1f is always less than or equal to lp2f right so these are some properties of lower sum and upper sum that we have done in the next lecture uh, we will we will define what are the lower integral upper upper integral and uh, we will define when is a function said to be turbos integ integrable so that's all for today thank you